La 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 la. Higher. La la la. <laughs> Welcome to Comedy Centric, your place for all things comedy. Every week we'll discuss the legends and the people who built the business, the performers, writers, behind the scenes, and stories that you have never heard. So relax, take a load off, and join us for this episode of Comedy Centric. Now the host of your show, nationally headlining comedian, a woman with a wicked sense of humor and a killer Jersey accent, Julia Scotty. La 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 la! La la, we would do a warm up exercise before. Yeah. We were, uh, oh, hi, I'm Julia Scotty, and this is. I got to do no, that way. I got that, that way. That way. That way. Yeah. This is. Oh, me. You. Yeah. Me, Kathy. Hi. Yeah. Hi. That's a nice sweater. <laughs> Did you knit that for the show? Did you just oh. knit that? Because <laughs> I've not no, seen I it before. I... This sweater, I got to tell you, there's a story behind this sweater. Oh, I, I bet there is. <laughs> What's wrong oh. with this sweater? Well, it's. Don't... No, it's, it's nice. I no, just, you have a I'm joke not, about it. You want no, to make... it's funny with the T-shirt underneath. Oh yeah, I know. Well, it's yeah. cold out tonight. It's like oh, well, I know. know, but it's <sighs> certainly an outfit you got going on there. Tell me about the sweater. All right, so the sweater when I when I started this this sweater is over twenty years old. The sweater. I'm shocked. Uh, <laughs> How about that? Can you see that? I uh, can't. I can't see through your sweater. Oh, okay. <laughs> there it is. No, I bought this sweater. I got and I got my right at, at uh, I yeah, I wanted the year I transitioned, and I you know when I left teaching, I wore it all through my teaching years. Really? When I, yeah, and, and you've uh, not bought another sweater. I don't. I'm not. I don't. I'm not a sweater person. Although I, I do what to like get you them. for Christmas, I'll tell you that much. This one's comfortable though. Like it's very comfy, you know. And was it always uh, pink or was it red at one point? It no, just it's, it's always been. It's not actually. It's a mauve. Oh it's well, not, you can't tell. After I know. Well, it's kind of old. That's why the lighting. Oh, let me All fix right, the we... lighting. Thanks for reminding me. I forgot. There's my lighting. How's oh, that? Look, better? Oh, yeah. much better. The sweater looks great. So I gotta tell you this. What? Um, have you ever had to get an estimate on something big? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Right. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But I mean, like, how, like construction wise. Yes. What, what do you did think? You get? I... Oh. Uh, uh, plenty of plenty of stuff, driveways and really, yes. Oh, okay, see, I've never been in a position where I had I had to get an estimate, and uh, I, I not that I'm in a position now, yeah. But I I want as you know, I want to get my sh my bathtub removed and have a shower put in so that when I'm older, and you I can't wheel right my, in there. I can I can I can't lift yeah. my leg up over the towel mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. I can just walk right in. And that's okay. where I'll be. So yeah. I'm on, I'm, you know, it's, it's a big job. And I'm like, you know, now I'm getting estimates and I'm calling people and I'm going, I need an estimate. And, and they're, and they're, well, gee, Miss Scotty, we'd love to come out and give you an estimate. And I feel so powerful. Right. Because they give, they give you the price. And I go, and I make my face. I go, I go, well, it's more than so and so is going to charge me. Yeah. And then what they do go, they say? They say, well, thank you very much. And they pack up their stuff and leave. And they go, get so-and-so to do it. Yeah, that's exactly what they say. So, so I got, I have two of them coming this week. All right. You know, so anyway. <sighs> yeah, I know that stuff is very stressful. Uh, you know, uh, you don't, you don't know what a fair price is. And, you, you know, don't. I, I feel like that, you know, if in a feeling that woman thing, you know, where they, because they see I'm old and they I'm They take single, advantage. Yeah. And they take advantage. You know, I think that, you know, I, I, uh, you, you know, need I to them... get yourself a burly man. You know, I was thinking about that. I was, excuse me. I was going to get a, ooh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, there is a burly man up the street. Uh, oh. Oh, wait. Magic, he's a, magic. No, he, he's a girly man. I'm sorry. I can't no, get it. No, he's, a, no, no. That dude, that that dude could grow vegetables on his stomach. He's a bigot. He's a bigot. A bigot. Not a bigot. No, bigot. bigot yeah. You win. No, he's a good. Uh, he's a good dude. So, uh, all right. Well, good luck. What are you getting done? Just the bathroom. That's it. No, no. They got to pull the tub out, and then they got to rebuild. They got to build a shower where the tub was. Okay, and, that, and okay. that's uh, you know, because that's. Has anyone be where... commented on your bamboo toilet paper? Nobody. 
No, I no, nobody's used. You know, it. I used it while I was there, and it seamless. I you wouldn't right? know it was bamboo. Absolutely, sure. yeah. And my and my new garbage bags are working pretty good. Oh, good. Uh, that's going well. Very nice. Um, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm getting into this whole green thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I've always been sort of conscious of the environment, mm -hmm. but then you know, like it, as long as it doesn't inconvenience me. But, I but know. now, it, but yeah, now I know you're worried. You know, now you're like, look, I can take a hit. I'm okay. I can take a little bit. But I'm not really suffering. I mean, I right. wipe like I used to wipe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, and I garbage like I used to garbage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trash in, trash out. Trash in, trash out. <laughs> Why can't I? Can you lift your head up? I think you're ignoring I was reading it. something. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so I sent you, a, there's a new movie coming out. And I, oh, you know, yeah. we need to, and, and did you watch the trailer? I did, I did. Okay, so Christmas Explain. Story Christmas. Right. Which is a version of the old Christmas story with Peter Billingsley. Right. <laughs> Excuse me, and you won't watch it. You know, you know. Uh, all right, let, let me let me. It? I may have jumped the gun with you. Oh no, no, no. Let me explain why. Okay, first of all, I still the chronological order is way out of whack. So that that I'll never I'll never reconcile it. Mm -hmm. the, the original movie took place in the 1940s, late the mid to late 1940s. This mm -hmm. one takes place in current time. If the kid who was if Peter Billingsley character was alive in the 1940s and they really reshot it today he'd be 80 something years old but he's not he's you know okay. he's in his 40s maybe at 30s or whatever that's number one then i'll let that go i'll let that go the thing of it is you know how i i mean the people i look behind me what, what's on the wall what's on the wall I can't what's, tell. what's that picture i know gene shepherd i gave that to you i know i know you is. did i know you did you know that to me, Gene Shepard's words are next to the Bible, um, sacred. Well, not, I don't even think the Bible's sacred. Gene Shepard's words are sacred, though. And well, I, I kind of screwing with his words. They're just uh, doing a different. Uh, <laughs> you're sorry, still not I, down for it. I might give it a try and look at it, but I'm going to be. It's going to be with this with this eye. Well, I'll be making this face. That's your bad eye. Yeah, that's not your good eye at all. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, oh. All right, uh -huh. well, get back so, to me. It comes out uh, November 17th. All right. I all came right. out on November 17th. No, you did not. I know, I'm just lying. I'm just well, you want to start lying. the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, let's do it. This guy, this, no, it's not a guy this week. It's a, it's a woman. And uh, she's a very funny woman, and she's an amazing woman. Um, I, we'll talk about how we met, uh, but, um, she, um, I go back to the very beginning with her. I know we keep seeming to come back to these essential stories. Yeah. But you know, every week, yeah. but it matters because those people were there at the very beginnings. And I like to trace careers and see what they, you know, what they became. And she mm -hmm. became a very, very successful uh, writer and producer and an Emmy Award winner. She's got five Emmys for crying out loud. Six, wow. six, six Emmys. Six. six Emmys. So our guest today is a, is an old dear friend and by the name of Jeanette Barber. And uh, we'll be uh, we'll be connecting with her in just a second or two. Hi there, everybody. It's me, Julia. Hey, why am I talking to you now? Now of all times? Uh, because I just uh, they, my my new special on Dry Bar, uh, Dry Bar Comedy Channel is just been released. It's called Julie Scotty Jersey Fresh because that's what I am. I slap myself. That's how fresh I am. So uh, you have to subscribe though to get the Dry Bar, um, and if you do, you get access to like I don't know thousands of other comics. But see my special first, Jersey Fresh, and if you enter my name, Julia Scotty. Uh, it's my understanding that you will get a free month of dry bar. So um, go. What are you waiting for? Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. What did you do during the break? Uh, none of your business. All right. 
Well, I found, I, I know, found a beautiful lady on the side of the screen, and I thought and she I would is bring a beautiful her in. Lady, uh, <laughs> we talked about you earlier, and you weren't you weren't here, so you didn't know all the nice things we said. But, ladies and gentlemen, the great, immortal, uh, stylish, always stylish, bon vivant, world traveler, Jeanette Barber. Hi, honey. How are you? Hey, I'm good. I really wish I was immortal, though, because that would work for me. We had that this question, that discussion, yeah. a couple of weeks back. Do you would you really want to be immortal? Yes. I really. Oh yeah, that's why I'm into vampires. Um, and people say, you know, oh, you'll have to drink blood. Fine. Move your head over a little. That, you hit uh, the other way. That, that's better. You might sure. be I can never. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm fascinated um, by that. What What would you do? You know, for eternity that would bring you pleasure that you want to live forever. Well, actually, I love every single moment. I really like being alive, um, even when it sucks. So I feel, and you would never have to hurry. Uh, if you're immortal, uh, you would be able to say, well, I think I'll read uh, boring books uh, for the next uh, 200 years. I think I'll just <laughs> sit on my ass and do nothing. Well, for, now, wait a minute now, because I put this question, I forgot to whom, but, but we did. All right, so you're going to be immortal, no matter what. Yes. Right? But the, the world ends. The, the, but the entity known as Jeanette Barber is immortal. She doesn't end. What happens to you now? Are you floating in space going, what do I do now? No one has ever suggested that. They do say everybody you know will die. And, you know, while that's unfortunate, um, I can work with that. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> the idea of the planet being gone... This may help me on my deathbed, Julia. All right. I'm Don't glad listen to, to her. She has a sweater on from 20 no, years ago. She oh, my gosh. She's, she's, she's out of her I'm mind. Wearing, you see the shirt I'm wearing, though? Uh -huh. You see what I'm wearing? You oh, see wow. What I'm wearing? Guess, yeah. right? How freaking cool is that? Yeah, because Max Delcelli made a bunch of these for some of us, and I got one. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, you know Max, right? You yeah. know Max? Okay. I don't know him well, but of course I know him. I think the whole world has to know him. She's a name dropper, Jeanette. She's just like, hi, oh, Max. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. Speaking of name dropping, you, you have quite the career. I mean, thank you. I didn't. It wasn't. Oh, shut up, sweater woman. Right. Talking to Jeanette. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, so you, yeah. Yeah. Six Emmys. I have six. I Emmys know. And five for Roseanne, right? But I'm telling you, all roads. Roseanne. Roseanne. Really? Rosie, so Roseanne. how did you meet? How did you guys get together? Oh, Ro yeah. Roseanne Barr, right? Ro no, Rosie, Rosie O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Oh, Rosie O'Donnell. Jesus sorry, Christ, but... get it right. Now she Shut got up, sweater woman. All right. <laughs> can I, but can we take, go ahead. go ahead. I mentioned that right away because I, I will, uh, I'd be grateful to her forever because she gave me a career and everything I got, uh, with her and anything I got without her, I got it because of the history I had with her. You know, I had a cooking show. I had, uh, I got a radio show after I did the radio show with her, but I, I consider everything all roads still lead to Rosie because it would never have happened uh, had she not given me that job. And I don't think anybody else was going to give me that job. So, uh, uh, but I met her, it was the first Thursday of March in 1987. And I was wearing a striped uh, Banana Republic uh, <laughs> skirt. I always remember what I was wearing. And uh, this peach top that was uh, ill-advised. And I used to think that um, shoulder pads would make me look thinner. So I wore incredibly large shoulder pads that often fell forward. So <laughs> it, was a, it, was, it was a good look. Uh, but bonkers in Orlando. And uh, I never used to keep up. I still don't really keep up. And so I knew she was some uh, comic from Long Island. Uh, I didn't really know a lot, so I wasn't at all intimidated. Uh, she'd done a couple of movies. Uh, but it was just, oh, I get to work with women. Because you remember back in the 80s, we did not get to work together that often, women. You and you and you and I. Well, I was well. Women well, in were, general, yeah, women so didn't get to work alive. together. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah. You were alive and yeah. uh, and a comic, and you you know that uh, they would they would book one woman on a show most of the time. So yes. uh, she and she was wearing uh, a, a teal sort of military cut uh, uh, jacket with epaulets, and uh, <laughs> she had the big uh, '80s hair, and we had a blast. 
Uh, and uh, it was one month to the day before she started uh, her job as a VJ on VH1. And I don't even remember she did that. Oh my God, yes. At that time, it was completely groundbreaking. Wow. So, yeah. I remember and that, yeah. I, I do remember that. that. I'm in the wrong direction again. No, um, you're good. You're good now. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, and, uh, you know, comics, we, we don't... Uh, we don't make up our acts on stage. We work on our acts. And it takes years to get that for hour, you know. Uh, but all of a sudden, she found herself in a position where she needed you know, five new minutes a day. So, which, you know, it sounds great. It doesn't sound like a lot. But every night we'd get on the phone because we just really had a great time in Florida. And uh, not as a job, but you know how we do this, you know, you hang with your friends who's like, oh, do you think this will work? Oh my God, I need this to work tomorrow. So we would, uh, we would, you know, brainstorm uh, each other's material and uh, stuff. And we just stayed friends. And, uh, and she hired me a bunch of times. Uh, there was one time, uh, the Tropicana, uh, a, a book by Kephart. Bob Kephart? Yes. In AC? In AC? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was down there one time with... Uh, we, by Sand. the way, we, we mentioned, we, whenever we, we refer to him as he whose name shall not be spoken. Right. Oh. Well, he hated me. And, <laughs> he hated uh, everybody. <laughs> yeah, but I deserved it because I, I was working with David Say and um, Rich Jenny. And Wow. Yeah. Who was closing that show? Jenny? Jenny. Jenny, yeah, okay. And... Uh, David Say was opening it, and I was the island of silence in the middle. I stopped <laughs> all week, every show. I couldn't, I couldn't make them like me. I had one decent show, only one, and there was a reviewer in the audience. Uh, and so I have a review. I don't have it anymore, but I had a review that you know said you know the you know the second coming. But it was the only <clears throat> show I got a single laugh in. So I really and demoralizing. I can't even tell you, and. Uh, uh, you know, I slunk out of town. Then a few years later, when I'm with Rosie, she says she's uh, working down there, and uh, do I want to come and and uh, and middle? And I said, Oh yeah, no. <laughs> so they, uh, the, you know uh, what? You could have walked in there with the Pope, and it still would have been a lousy show because that place was a lousy room. It was a really hard room, uh, but believe me. David Say and Rich Jenny were not sucking the way I was, but I did. So I said, no, no way. He's not going to book me again. I really went down the toilet. She said, hold on. Um, she calls Kephart and says, uh, uh, you know, I want Jeanette to uh, middle. And he said, we're not booking her. She said, I won't come. So I was booked. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> and, great. I love yeah. that's a That's that's a great story. Well, that's the first nice line is, I still sucked. <laughs> I that room. I can, I can There's some it. rooms you can't do. Some rooms you just can't land. Uh, was it the old, the old room or the new one? The old it was, one it was or the, the old one. It was back downstairs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The old room, Kath, was a, it was a horrible. It was set up horribly. The green room was behind the stage. You actually came. From, yeah. You know. Yeah. From the, you remember that? It was. I do vaguely. Weird. It felt but like I a stripper. To suppress that memory. I really worked. <laughs> Worked at that. Lots, lots of vodka to do that. Yeah. I, I want to take a step back because I was, I always like to think of how I met people. And I, and I was thinking of you and I was thinking for some reason, um, Hamburger Harry's comes into my head. Do you remember Hamburger Harry's? I remember was... Hamburger Were we there? Because I remember you in the writer's group. That's the part that, that uh, Jane Stroll had at her house. Right. Yeah, yeah, but that, I think that was that's where we actually got to know each other. But I think right. we worked together at at Hamburger Harry's. Was it was it, where was that? It was like in Midtown, Kathy. It was, it was in a, Midtown. Was it in the forties? It was some, yeah. somewhere around. It was a it was a hamburger joint, basically. Yeah. Oh, and they they did comedy. Uh, once a week, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Friday or maybe it was the weekend. Gladys Gladys yeah. Simon did it, wasn't it? Yeah, the great Gladys Simon, who I'd love oh, to get Paul's on the show. mom. Huh? Paul's mom. <laughs> yeah, Paul's. Oh, <laughs> see, none of us got that. Okay, all right. Well, we'll fix that in post. Um, <laughs> I'll be funnier in post. <laughs> we all are. Where's my yeah, laugh we... track? Damn it. Um, uh, so, I th but we did. Uh, yeah, uh, we were Jeanette and I were in a writers group with Jane Stroll and uh, Eddie Feldman. What Eddie Eddie friends? Feldman, who went on to work and uh, Gary, um, what's his name? Show. Uh, he won an Shanley? Emmy for it. 
Shanling show, yeah. I think he what? won. Wasn't he also on what's his name show? Um, <laughs> Dennis Miller. Did yeah, you? but we don't talk about that. Yes, he was on Dennis Miller show, but That's he won the Emmy. Baltimore's here. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> But we, uh, he was such a nice guy. I remember he was very funny, and I was always jealous of yeah, him. Yeah, I really liked him. Well, I still yeah. do. He's not dead. Oh. Well, I haven't seen him in 40 years, so I... I uh, yeah, I, I talked to him on the phone about 20 years ago, so I'm ahead. Okay, so... <laughs> did he... <laughs> yeah, well, you don't call me either, but... Oh, well, I don't... I, I am odd. I don't know if you're aware of this. I am odd. Really? I hadn't well, noticed. <laughs> In what you way? are not odd. You are you are unique, my dear. I gotta tell you, she. I can I just I'm just gonna gush over you for a minute. I oh. I love I love having her back in my life because she's. I just look at she she travels the world. Most notably, she likes Morocco I a lot. Morocco. I know, and and Portugal, which is very Moroccan, in its architecture, is it not? Uh, uh, well, I suppose it is a bit Moorish. Uh, yeah, it influence. I like developing countries the best, though. I really love Portugal, but I prefer places with a little bit of a of an edge. I like something to be a little bit horrible. Um, now, where my, are you? Where are you now? Where do you live right now? I'm in, in, uh, I'm in uh, Manhattan. In oh, oh well, that apartment. is a little bit more horrible. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I do love it here. I, I moved she doesn't like Manhattan. In 1978. Yeah. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah, I never but left. but Jeanette, as she she always posts these pictures as if they just came out of a magazine, and they're perfectly framed. They're perfectly shot. The lighting is as if as if the gods arranged the sunlight and the and and, and, and the clouds to just be precise in order to show her off. And and you sit there and you go, and she's never wearing the same outfit twice. That she's there. So I always picture her going into a a hotel. Uh, you've got one of those old steamer trunks that the, you know, <laughs> not like the Eve Arden, you know, will come in with all his, her outfits and stuff. Because like you're in the Titanic. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And you go, how does she, I asked you how you found people to take those pictures, but then you told me you bring a photographer. I travel with a, with a guy that I go out with. I can't use the B word. I don't like the B word. So I don't know what you call them. Companion. I, what do you call it? A companion? Because then it sounds like I've hired him. Well, that's okay. true too. But so let's let's get back to comedy. Okay, first of all, I didn't know you won six Emmys. Um, but most yeah, of those are up over there. I don't know if you can see them. I can't. No. Uh, but let me ask you a question. You get you get hired as a head writer, and you've never you've never head written before, right? Correct? correct. So you walk into this room with other experienced writers. Yes. No. Yeah. Well, actually. What happened was I threatened people. No, what actually what happened was I was hired as a staff writer, and uh, there was another uh, head writer, uh, actually uh, Randy Cohen, who was one of the most brilliant people I've ever met in my entire life. And so he was the head writer, and I was. Uh, not only did I had I not been a head writer, I didn't even really watch TV, and I knew nothing about pop culture. So you know, good hire. Wow. And but what I did know, it turns out, the thing I knew. I uh, was the most important thing because I knew her and I knew her in an odd way. Uh, and I still, I can still tell you what she's going to say. And I don't know why, um, but I was able to, it, the, the most challenging thing I think for a stand up comic who is going to become a writer for someone else is that you have to let go of your own voice. Yeah. If you go in and try to write comedy and write the things that you think are funny in the way that you think you are funny, you are not going to get picked up after your first option. So what you have to do, and and, I, and it is incredibly difficult because you, you're a comic, you want to be that. But you have to let yourself go completely. Um, and you have to get inside their head and you have to, um, you have to think like them and you have to want what you once wanted for yourself, you need to want it a hundred times more for that person. How did wow. you become aware you could do that? Uh, because Just... she hired me. Here, uh, I um, okay. <laughs> here's what I can do, and I know this. I'm 69 years old, and this I am certain of. What I can do is exactly what you think I can do. I can only do what you think I can do. And she thought I could do it. 
But okay, look, I still want to get back to that first day of walking into the writer's room, uh-huh. which which I've never done, but I, I hear it, the pressure is just, it's like the first day of school and you're teaching the class, you know, how, what is that like? What, how do you establish yourself as the head writer? Well, that was, uh, I became head writer six months in and uh the way it happened was, for one thing, the, it, in the very beginning of that show, she did a monologue, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a, a current topic monologue, like a lot of people did. And uh, so we, there were six of us, I guess, all writing jokes. Those kind of jokes, current current events jokes, honestly, not my strong suit, because I'm more personal. This is what happened in the moment, you know, that kind of of mm-hmm. thing, but I look at the news and instead of finding it funny, you know, I, I just, I want to either kill myself or whoever that is. So th- they were very challenging for me. And, you know, if I got a joke a week that she was interested in, it was a miracle. So um, it occurred to me that I sucked at that too. I, I'm really making a case <laughs> for myself. So I went in and, you know, own up to what you can't do. And I said, you know, I, I know my my jokes are not great. My bits, I was getting lots of bits on, you know, games, all the stuff that, that wasn't monologue jokes. And I said, I would, I think I would be better at that. And she said, well, uh, why don't, instead of writing the monologue, why don't you coordinate the monologue and keep writing all the other bits? Um, so, uh, because everybody- Good on her. Good on yeah. her for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, she's she is great, and mm-hmm. uh, and she didn't have any time. It was oh, we were a monster hit within a day, uh, so and it really was that show was. Hit. Well, I have a question about that. The the the, the famous uh, feud with our former president uh, was one of the, I believe one of the things that just sort of propelled that show. Uh, uh, you know, it was already a well, hit, but I mean, they're just. Too. I thought well, didn't she also yeah, she carried was it gone. over on the show? She was already gone from it wasn't show, carried right? over onto the show too. No, well, because we had we finished our show in 2002. Yeah. Our show. But she made everybody feel like it was your show. You didn't tell yeah. yeah, yeah. like her. Okay, then that. never mind. That question is but yeah. but but probably the view for sure. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. she was feuding with him. It was 2006. Okay. Oh, All right, then never mind. Yes, it was it was December, it began. Uh, December of 2006. Okay. Yeah. So you, 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 when you, you were there for, for how many seasons then? I was at the, the show lasted six seasons. I was there the whole six seasons. The whole time. And then you yeah. went to the view after that? Yeah. After the, uh, when, uh, when Rosie, uh, and the show wasn't canceled. Every, they want her to do more, but she said right from the beginning, the day she signed on, she said, I'm not going to do this forever. So uh, six years in, she left the show. And that's when uh, I thought uh, uh, I wanted to you know, do something myself again. So I pitched a show uh, to the Food Network. Um, uh, the funny there is I can't cook. But, you know, you can't let things stop you. Why let something like that stop you? Yeah. So The monologues are hard and I can't cook. <laughs> We have you were made for this business, Jeanette. <laughs> I know. Here's the thing. If you can figure it out, just lie. And I, I, we had a food producer uh, on uh, on Rosie named Christina Deo. And so I went to her and, and she and I were both on air on the show. Because, you know, I was, you know, I was the Rosie's version of Biff, I think. So I was, I was on her show a lot. And uh, Christina would do cooking and craft segments on the show. So I said, let's pool our star power and <laughs> pitch a show so uh and you know, my entire life is always about weight uh that is that my weight has defined my oh, yes my i can i can attest to that well, i know yeah. i've known her a long time yes yeah, I, it's up and down and up and down uh so i had an idea of a food makeover show which now just seems old hat but there wasn't anything like it then uh, where uh you would take because everybody says oh you're you know you want to lose weight eat a carrot and i would say if i wanted a carrot can we back up just for a second? Can we just back up to the way, back to the to the, the origins of the weight issue? Uh-huh. You, uh, what you did, and you know, I'm not going to talk out of school unless you feel like talking about you it. You can say anything. You, well, no, you 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 know, when we worked in the writers group, you were significantly. I, I, I used to be fat. Um, <laughs> I have. How fat were you, Jeanette? Well. <laughs> I was very my my top weight. You never saw me at my top weight. My top weight was two hundred and seventy five pounds. Wow! 
Yeah. I and did, I, did yeah, you I did feel like, did you feel like not well at that weight? Like, you feel horrible. You hate yourself. Because mm-hmm. um, you're beautiful. You're just a beautiful woman. You well, know, that's the thing. I... An extra 155 pounds on, my nose looked a lot like a raisin in a muffin. But <laughs> No, uh, you were, you know, no, that's bullshit because you were pretty back then, too. You were very pretty back then. Yeah. That's really, but you know, you don't think it yourself. And uh, No, and, that's and, true. And you made yeah. that very, made all of us aware of that. Right. And was that, that was that a struggle was... from young up? I, I was I weighed 115 when I was seven, 200 when I was 12, 250 yeah. at 14. Yeah. So I was always really fat. Um, and uh, then I would lose it. I'm excellent at losing weight. I, I'm not quite so good at maintaining uh, the weight. During the pandemic, uh, and, and during during the rosy years, I gained 50 pounds in the first five months. So yeah, it is stressful. Oh, and then uh, on Rosie Radio, I gained some weight again. So I, I was always going up and down. But I, I was down at 140 at the beginning of the pandemic and uh, went up to uh, 170. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm 5'2". Uh, no, 5'3". Used to be 5'4". You know what? Yeah. And <laughs> um, yeah, feeling young and pretty. And uh, uh, so now I, I, uh, now I weigh 122. Oh my gosh. No, 121.8. Wow. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah she looks great. I, I mean, you're, uh, I mean, that's little. That's small. I know. Six Holy more pounds cow. to go. <gasps> no way. Don't do I've got it. I bird bones. I am a tiny, tiny, tiny person. Oh, no. no yeah, no, I'm no. one of those little, I, I, I should be a matchstick. Oh, my but, God. You're so. You know. mm. Oh, believe God. me, I'm not too thin. Um, I will not get you canceled by standing up. And pulling my shirt up and <laughs> releasing the kraken. I'm not going to do that. We, we usually say we might get more the, hits. We, I don't we know. say that for the Christmas show, Jeanette. So you'll have to come <laughs> back and and do it then. Uh, let me, let, is that let on the just... pay? Is that on the pay side of our programming? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> so you 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 did, you did that. You had your own food mm-hmm. show. You had a radio show uh, called Jeanette's Show. What else? What did you I talk about? What did you talk about, Jeanette, on your uh, show? Oh, it was it was like all radio. Radio talk radio is really fun. Uh, you spend the first half hour talking about everything you can think of that you thought or did or saw uh, since the last time you were on the air, mm-hmm. and then you do uh, guests uh, for it was a two hour show. Then I did guests, and I would close out the last fifteen minutes with me talking about uh, whatever topics uh, yeah. we could come up with. So first uh, personal, then interview. And then uh, uh, topics. It was a and it, this was on terrestrial radio. It was on no on Sirius XM. On Sirius, and you know what? There, in my personal opinion, we have a lot of conservative conservative talk radio, but there yeah. isn't a lot of. I don't want to say liberal, but more mainstream or leaning or non political. Yeah, just talk radio. Yeah, just because being I- able to just talk. Right. I got to Sirius because Rosie went to Sirius and I was her executive producer and sidekick. And then she wanted to uh, go and do uh, the show on the Oprah Network and I didn't want to leave radio. So uh, I told them that uh, I didn't want to go and they go, you're going to go with her. I said, no, no, I'm staying. Uh, And it took me about a month of telling the uh, VP of talk, I'm staying. Well, she went to the Oprah Network. What did she do on the Oprah Network? She did a talk show. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when she had a horrible time slot, and there's things that's not my story to tell. Uh, but okay. I, I think that they it was a situation that was hard uh, to succeed in, and it you know it didn't it, it, yeah so that one didn't work out. Um, okay. I ended up I uh, uh, in January uh, I had gone out there to do my show from there to launch a. Um, sweepstakes for her show because there was a studio out there because she was in uh chicago because uh, that's where the oprah long story and uh, yeah uh while i was there uh she asked me to come back out there so i commuted to chicago uh three days a week from new york from new york wow. and the show was really really starting to you know take a turn because uh then we started doing the kind of work that she wants to do instead of something that was imposed on her, but it didn't happen in time. And then the show ended. So I stayed. But you know what? I, I, the, I want to get back to you because you're the guest and she's not. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the thing about you 
and, and, and I, you know, only having reconnected with you a couple of years ago, but when I, I started to find out some of the things you did, and I went, God damn it, I'm so happy for her. She's so remarkable. She just, oh. I know you, I know your insecurities from way back. So, I mean, I remember what that was like. And it was, and I can remember the writer's group going, God, she was shut up already about the insecurity. She's, oh, you know, yeah. She's, I she's beautiful, though. But, but to see what you did, and, and you know, I'm looking at the title of the book, uh, uh, Embracing Your Big Fat Ass. <laughs> I can only imagine, you know, it's, it's the essence of who you are. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. I am just so goddamn proud of you. You give me hope. Well, give you hope. My God, you are so freaking inspiring to me. Really? Because uh, she's annoying to me. <laughs> <laughs> Bad girl. Bad girl. No, we love each no, other. No, I love her so much. It's it's silly, but you, I, I, it's, I mean, again, just sitting here and you're you're glowing and you're just mm. fantastic. Lighting. It's. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, but but what a re remarkable career! So, are you still you're still doing serious? No, uh, no. Uh, okay. The, during a, a serious had uh, it was a corporate takeover when Liberty Media bought it. You wouldn't know this because there'd be no reason to um, right. uh, care about that. Uh, but at that point, when they did, they came in and they asked like uh, ten or fifteen shows, and mine went out the window then. Oh. But but we don't like the, the risk of saying a cliche. One door opens, you know, when another one closes. Oh, yeah. It's just you. I want to talk about your humanitarian stuff um, because in a hundred years, I would not have said that that's a direction you were taking. Um, I, I thank you for for uh, bringing it up, and it's actually uh, I, I had a thought in my head to say uh, that. One of the things after the radio show ended, uh, and I always in my head wanted to do this. I wanted to, the career matters to me, <clears throat> and I don't feel like I'm done, but I do feel now that there is more to life than a career. And also, the career can give you things mm -hmm. that you could never get otherwise. And that's what the humanitarian work uh, was for me. Uh, I wanted initially, uh, this sounds not very humanitarian, I wanted to go to a war zone. I was always interested. I, I just, it felt there's something about life on the very, very thin edge of the blade that I always want, I wanted to uh, uh, experience. And I got to, I know we're not talking about it because of Rose Hotel, got to go uh, to the refugee camps in Albania during the war in Kosovo. Wow. And uh, because I had been watching the news uh, and I was obsessed with that war. Uh, and one night I was watching uh, Larry King live when his show was newsy and actually and really good. And there was a woman crossing, uh, uh, an Albanian woman crossing over into Macedonia. And she was crying so much that they weren't dripping. It was two steady streams of tears. I've never seen that before or after. And I wanted to go. And I want, but I wanted to do something. So I nagged uh, Rosie into talking about, because all of her issues are, are domestic. There's no one that does more for charity, but she cares about this country and kids. I cared about other countries and, and uh, different situations. And she talked about it. And uh, we put up a, a Chiron, because she always wanted to give people a chance to, uh, a call for action. And uh, they called, and my assistant, who called? Who called you? The oh, State the, Department? The charity, AmeriCares. Okay. Uh, because she mentioned them, and they got so many calls and so many donations, it blew out their phone lines. Mm -hmm. So they called to uh, uh, with a thank you. And my sister took the call, and without hanging up on them, fortuitously put them on hold because she couldn't control herself. She had to tell me immediately that they wanted to invite Rosie on an airlift, which is only funny if you really know Rosie because she's not going on an airlift. Oh. To a war, uh, war country, uh, and I said, um, "Tell them she might be interested." <laughs> <laughs> and I went in and asked if I could go. And uh, the the uh, production company, uh, uh, Warner Brother, absolutely not. Even if you sign, it's okay to die paperwork because you have to sign that kind of thing. Um, no, no, no. They don't want it. They won't let you. No crew. You can't have it. No. 
she calls me at home and uh, uh, she says, uh, she asked if the person I was going out with, which is why I can't use the B word anymore, but uh, if he could run a camera. Uh, and so she gave me a leave of absence that had no effect on my paycheck. Wow. So that I could go. Oh my gosh. Uh, on an, uh, it was a C-130 um, into, uh, into Albania. And it was a, I did catch a, a touch of TB, but you know, <laughs> into each life a little rain must fall. And, uh, and that started it. And then months later mm -hmm. I went into Kosovo. We were the first uh, airlift from any agency and the city was still burning. And it was unbelievably profound uh, to meet the people and uh, the children in the camps. It really is a Pied Piper uh, thing. And I what is that? I mean, listen to, she's Albania, Kosovo, Congo, Congo, Rwanda. Are you kidding me? Ukraine and the Philippines. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. It was great. Uh, the, I'll tell one story on that. The, uh, the going to Congo is my most adventurous moment. I think of my whole life because uh, we had to fly to Belgium to get on a 727 gutted for cargo horses before us. And uh, there hadn't been any aid to this country. And, and we were only going to establish a, a route. It's, Congo is so corrupt. It's, it's actually impossible. But uh, the, the flight is so full. We're like <clears throat> medical tubing in between the cracks. It was supply. That's what we did. That's what Americans did. So uh, very, very, very full plane. And so we were sitting in the tail of the, of the plane. But what I didn't know is, uh, and it's all gutted, just ribs in there, is that it wags. The tail oh, wags. Yeah. Uh -huh. I get violently motion sick. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. I mean, I have trouble in a car. So uh, by the time we land in Tripoli, which at the time in Libya, Americans could not touch pavement. You could stay in the plane. You could not even set a foot on the ground because Americans were not allowed in that country. And we had to refuel. And uh, I uh, couldn't have gotten on the ground anyway, what with the vomiting. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Not exactly was, a welcome to Libya kind of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we brought something for you. Yeah, it, it, we're leaving this here, so <laughs> enjoy. But there was a, 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 but standing there was the, the, the pilot, Zimbabwean crew with 20,000 cash in the cockpit in case of emergency. And they're putting on and it was 120 degrees and they're putting on fuel and fuel and fuel and fuel. And one of the other relief guys said, are you going to be able to take off with this much fuel? And they said, this is going to push the limits of the 727, but we have to because there might not be fuel there and we have to be able to uh, get back. Get out of there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So then they take off. You don't have to strap down. There's no rules whatsoever if you're flying cargo. And uh, so you've got the pilot, the co-pilot and a navigator. They were buckled in. The, and now we're going down the runway and the pilot's pushing on the throttle. Then the uh, co-pilot reaches over and starts pushing on the throttle. And we're getting closer and closer to blue lights. The navigator unbuckles. So all three men are leaning on this and it goes over the lights and kind of lumbers into the air. And then I wow. had five more hours to vomit it until we landed uh, in Congo. So much fun. Well, I, I so never, much fun. <laughs> I never, so I, this sounds like such a hokey question. And I've never asked anybody uh, it before because it's a hokey question. But I, I we're at the same age just about. You're a little bit younger than I am. I'm 70. And I and I know that I look back at my life sometimes and I go, what the fuck? You know, I, I haven't done anything. Uh, and And when you look back at your life, you got to feel, I mean, you're like, you're like a missionary, first of all, you, you know. It, they were not long trips, but you are right. The, uh, when I look at my life, the biggest, the biggest accomplishments and the best parts of my entire life were those missions. And uh, I just mentioned this to you uh, in the weekend. And this last weekend, a woman, Caroline Bomas, who I met uh, yes. on the plane going to Albania, uh, working with the relief group, they, they sent her uh, as well. And uh, she has created a, a charity. She did it in 2009 called Camp TLC, Together Living a Challenge. And uh, it's uh, children of, um, you know, challenge children, anything from cancer, autism, uh, bereavement, 
uh, extreme uh, poverty, all of this stuff, uh, because she had she used to run a camp uh, for kids with AIDS, and uh, she had a profound belief that every kid deserves camp, uh, uh, meaning a break from whatever thing they're dealing with and a chance to feel normal. And she's been asking me, and I just think I can't, it's not me. I don't know how to do that. I don't know kids, and uh, for some reason. Uh, a month and a half ago, uh, she had a camp uh, this last weekend for kids with autism, and she asked if I would go and teach them improv. And for some reason, I said yes. Now, the funny here is, um, don't know how to teach. Uh, <laughs> I see a pattern. I see yeah. a pattern. <laughs> right, it's a real through line. I don't know how to teach, and uh, I'm not. Uh, I I'm not very good at improv. Uh, uh, so I have no skill set for this at all. And so I thought, definitely, I, I can do that. Sure. And <laughs> so, but that's, you can lie if you think you can eventually. It's like, I never tell people I can do brain surgery. I think that would be wrong. Yeah. But uh, it was. You're kind of like, uh, like the music man, you know, it's, it's thinking, the, the think system, you know. <laughs> Just. I'm a liar. You really are. You're a great liar, though. I'm just a freaking liar. <laughs> but um, well, as comics, we're all liars, you know. You have to you know. Be. Of course, yes. But but you well, make it you happen. Believe you can have. You really can have. I am thin today. I'm going to go back and just finish the other story. But I am thin today because when I was little, I would spend hours. I didn't like to play, but I would spend hours imagining myself in outfits, and I was thin. Um, and less than five percent of people that lose the kind of weight I've lost keep it off. It's because I saw it and I always believed it. We imagined, why are we stand-ups? How can we, how did, how did we do this? Because stand-up is impossible. It is it's impossible. Because, yeah, and we saw ourselves. <clears throat> we imagined mm -hmm. ourselves until we finally did it because we wanted it so bad. So anything that you can convince yourself you can do, you can do. If you can't convince yourself, honestly, you're screwed. But right. the, the, the weekend was as profound, if not more, than anything I've ever done. The age range was four to 17. Uh, they weren't, uh, there, some people were high functioning, some were barely functioning. Uh, there was uh, one boy was uh, Down syndrome. Um, uh, one was so severe that he was in a wheelchair and uh, couldn't talk. They all took my class. Well, how, how did it go? Uh, I would tell you how, I would tell you how I did it, I cannot, but I do not know because everything, they can't do improv, but I wasn't trying to ready them for whose line it is in, is it anyway. Uh, it was really to make them feel like they have a win and uh, to be happy. And this is gonna cross as bragging, but it was so amazing to me that I start with uh, three and then uh, the, the Down syndrome boy, I, oh, I've never been around uh, children and I've never, ever, ever had any one-on-one -on -one contact with special needs kids before in my life. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, and I loved him. And then they started trickling in. And Caroline told me people, because they could come to me or the pool. And she said, they <laughs> coming over and telling people in the pool to come over. And then more and more. So the 45-minute session was, uh, I did two hours because people started, they came in. And I have to make things up when I don't even know how, because I don't know how. Uh, because the stuff I planned wasn't going to work because they couldn't quite do it. And then they all liked it and said they were coming back. And in the next morning, I had a full room uh, for two hours. And even though they can't do it, they all felt like they could. Yeah. And even the boy who couldn't, um, who couldn't <laughs> walk or talk, uh, he did understand the concept of zombie tag. And to see him rolling uh, uh, around uh, and giggling uh, like that. And, it was unbelievable, Un unbelievable. Uh, mm -hmm. And now I'm going to go to South Dakota in three weeks and do it again. Oh, but, cool. Yeah. But how did I get to that? Through comedy. Stand-up mm -hmm. comedy gave me all of that. I wouldn't have met Rosie without comedy. And, and improv, I'm, you know, you're still funny with whatever you're doing. You can't help it. Little Bradley, uh, he's eight. Uh, uh, he told his mother that I was funnier than her, and I got a, <laughs> I got a text that now he wants to learn improv. He wants to, she, she wa he wants her to find a place for him to have uh, improv classes. Oh my gosh, um, that's so cool! 
Yeah. You're, 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 one, so you are, um, you're a perfect example of, of people who have tapped into the universal energy and have figured it out, whether consciously or not. And you, you're able to create your own reality <clears throat> by simply seeing it. And, and it, and it's, that's one of the things I love about you. Uh, you know, I, I learned, I began to learn that when I was uh, transitioning, you know, and my first job was working with the handicapped kids. Wow. And I, same thing. I worked with, yeah. Uh, and it's just the most rewarding experience you could, you could possibly imagine. Mm. But you're, you're just such a great example of, of, a, of, of accomplishing whatever you see. And taking a challenge on whether or not you're qualified to do it, you become qualified. Right. I haven't been qualified for anything I've ever done. I, I mean, if you let that get in the way, you'll never do anything. Well, that's why you're one of my heroes. I got to say it. Yeah, you are. You're one of my heroes. Thank you. I see why. Are you okay, Jay? You, you little stuffy? I, mean, <laughs> I got, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm going to put you on mute for a minute. Oh, she's oh, she's gonna do the thing. It's it's a thing. It's really is it it's allergies? A clear. I don't know what it is, but you know you don't want to hear that. What's oh. going on off camera right now? We didn't. No, no. There's only no. so many things we can take. There's only so yeah. many things you can visualize. And Absolutely. Survive. Yes. Oh, I think we're good. We got it all clear. I have. Uh, I'm having thyroid issues, so I. I got oh, it. oh! I see. I'm making fun of you, and you're having the thyroid. Well, plus I have sinuses and allergies, oh so I'm a God. friigging mess. You are. I have allergies now for the first time in my entire <clears throat> life. I've what are you allergic to? to? No idea. I'm going to see a really? physician. It started. Well, it's, it's not success. That's for damn sure. <laughs> 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 um, Wow. So, but you, you, we were talking a couple of weeks ago. You were saying you were, you were thinking of going back to doing stand up. How's that going? Well, the thing is, <laughs> it hasn't happened yet, but I, uh, you know, I know she's a very good friend of, uh, of yours, the wonderful uh, Anita Wise. Uh, we were uh, messaging, and I don't know why, but she said, uh, uh, she said, Would you ever want to do stand up again for just one night? And I said, Sure. <laughs> Who wouldn't? I bet if if I had any regrets, <clears throat> where's my list? No, I, I, but you can't regret anything. You just can't. That is a waste of you cannot do it. But if I was gonna indulge in a regret, it would have been stopping doing stand up. And uh, so I said sure. And uh, so then I get another message, and she set up a, a date for me at. Uh, uh, I, the, the club that has the wall the old improv was in. and uh, Oh, with Joe Salabi. Joe Salabi. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. Do you have material? What? It doesn't matter. She doesn't need material. Do you She's have material? Or are you oh, like... I wrote some. Oh. Uh, I had, to, uh, I had uh, like a month's notice, and I don't have any old material because I never wrote it down, and I can't remember it uh, <laughs> at all. And besides which, I'm not going to do uh, 69 material that I, that I was doing in my 30s. It's not, it's just not going to resonate. It's not going to be me. And besides, I'm also funnier now. Everyone is, as you Yes, know. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you I give a right. shit, bust. You don't care anymore. You're, well, like, you just like, grow. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah grow. You, all, you have a, you have, now you have a life experience. You know, right. I think I'm funnier now than I was back then. I think you're hysterical now. And I think, and you, not that you weren't before, but you said this in some interview, you said, you said it is that you have more to talk about. Um, yes. yes, it's life experience, and and you know even and and you've gone through this. Well, you've actually you know come back and in a big way. But the the ten years you weren't doing stand up, you still grew as a stand up. Well, I mean, as a teacher, you know, you you yeah. you you're still doing stand up. It's just that you know you have the one audience for 180 days. <laughs> so you better <laughs> you be writing the life experience. The yeah, life experience yes. continues to give you yeah. that something to draw upon. Right. I think, yeah. And I think that's what, you know, if you're going to go back, Jeanette, you, I'll, I'll give you one, just not that you need my advice, but just be fearless. And I think you yeah. are. I mean, you really, really are. By the way, I'm 9% Albanian. So thanks for that. You're for welcome. It's it. a lovely country. And at the time it was a rogue state, but now I hear it is, it's the new beach location in Europe. So oh, uh, oh okay. I, I want to go back. Are you working with anyone right now? Any particular? Like... Uh, I got a part, my writing partner, uh, 
Uh, and that's I said I wrote the stand up. I did write a uh, stand up, but then Michael, my my partner, I said, hey, I'm writing these jokes you want to play. Uh, so we like writing together so much that we would actually write a laundry list together. What do you want at the store? I got <laughs> uh, Tide uh, Pods. Yeah. So uh, so he, so we wrote some stand up, some of the stand up, and I have kept writing, Julia. Uh, uh -huh. I haven't because I went to I got COVID right after I think I got COVID that night at the club, so it was a gift, you know. Uh, and uh, that I got COVID. Oh, you went you went did it already with Anita? You, you did yeah, it no, already? I did. Oh, okay. I, did that. I thought it was coming up. No, That's you right, you did. Me. Yeah, you I know. I'm me. just. I know. I'm. I'm losing my marbles. You know, I'm just losing my. No, marbles. You're, uh, you talk to a million people, but but you d you did know that I did it. And I, five days later, I did catch COVID, and we talked on the phone. Yes, we did. So I was, I'm thinking, yes, I'm going to do it. But then I had the COVID. Then I went to Europe for a month. Then I came back and did autism. So I haven't, uh, <laughs> I haven't done what I need to do. But I have kept writing. Uh, you can't help it. Once you get on stage again, yeah, it just. I call it writing, but it just, you know, a run comes into Well, that's that, that muscle memory. I mean, you can't, you know, it's, it's an obligation to write. We feel, we feel like we have to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know what so, you're talking about. That, and well. Michael and I, and this, I won't say anything more other than it exists, but Michael and I have been working on a, uh, on a project to treatment uh, for a couple of years uh, and a series. And, uh, you know, you don't, uh, you you got to be ready. You don't pitch. You you don't pitch it when it's it's good. It's got to be perfect. So it's taken us a long time. That, well, stop there because I want to talk about that. That's a, such an important set that you got to be ready. Yes. Uh, we I get one I, chance. Yeah, you I don't know who we chance. had on the show, but we were talking about that very same thing. Uh, that you know, you may you may get turned down for dozens and dozens and dozens of things, but you got to be ready for when that one thing. Right. Uh, happens. Yeah. But also that on. one thing has to be ready for people to see it. And I, I'm yes. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Jeanette. No, but that's all right. But that was, you don't go because you wish you were ready. If to go back into the past of a comedy story, uh, you remember Rick Messina, obviously. Oh, sure. Uh, and I, uh, so, and he had all of these, uh, um, uh, clubs and, uh, uh, stuff and everybody, uh, and I, there was the Professional Comedians Association for 20 minutes. I was uh, president. I was oh, president. before you, well, for... first, when Jerry Diner was president, I was secretary. Okay, so we, we go back that, oh, that's how yeah, far back we far. go, yep. And okay. we had, uh, we had... Um... Hair club for men, I'm not just a user, I'm the president. <laughs> uh, but Messina came in to talk to the group and, and everybody is, is up there, uh, you know, you know, can I call you? Can I call you? See the look of panic in his eyes. I had auditioned for him once at the strip, and this will surprise you. I sucked. Again, <laughs> I had broken my toe that day. I was wearing a long, a peach outfit. Though, what what were you auditioning for? Star Search? Were we? No, that was just auditioning for for Messina. Just oh, for working for him. Okay, okay. So and everyone, well, 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 this is just to tell people who Rick Messina. Was a bartender out in Long Island. Uh, we brought. He came up on the show a couple of weeks ago. His name came up, and who, when the boom happened, he started booking clubs out on the island, and he and he became really well known. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, uh, and then now he's he's managing. Uh, uh, what's it? The, Tim Allen. Tim Allen. Yeah, he's been that managing. Was, and and that, a lot of other people. And now he's uh, well for a while. He was Messina Baker Management. Right. And, I don't know if he's doing and producing stuff. I don't know if he's doing that stuff uh, anymore. I think it's just Tim Allen at this point. He doesn't need to be. You know, he's made so much money. Right. Up to, uh, uh, right. Home and, and one star at that level can, you know, can uh, take up all your time. But after I sucked, and in fairness, on that particular audition, no one was ready and everybody sucked. And they were all going up. <laughs> book me, book me. What were they wearing, though? What were they wearing? I know what I was wearing. I'm the important one. <laughs> I don't remember other people's outfits except those that. But so I slink out of the club like a normal person because I sucked. Then at the PCA thing, um, everybody surrounding him, you know, wanting uh, to book him, and I didn't. I went up to him because uh, he was. Um, I needed to thank him, and uh, I walked up to him. He says, "You know what? You can start calling in availability." I said, "Well, that, thank you, but I just want to thank you know, thank you for the PCA, blah blah blah." I didn't didn't start calling it an availability because I didn't think I was good enough yet. 
Then uh, I run into him someplace else like a year later. He says, uh, Jeanette, uh, you know, nice to see. If you want to call in availability, you can call in availability. I said, thank you. I didn't because I wasn't good enough yet. And then uh, I finally got to the point where I thought I'm, I am good enough to middle in his rooms. And I called him up and I said, Rick, uh, you know, I never called because I wasn't ready, but I'm ready now. And he booked me at Garvin's and Bonkers in Orlando, which is where I met Rosie. Oh, wow. That's, what, we were, that's what I was talking about yeah. with the universe. Wow. Putting, you know, yeah. working in your favor. That's exactly what I meant. It's a great but I example. also thought it because I didn't do it. When, and then when he was booking comedy on the road on A&E, more time had passed since I'd seen him. And I called him up and I said, you know, Rick, I never call you if I'm not ready. And he said, what city do you want? Oh, wow. Um, but that all happened because I didn't go up and have him look at me suck and suck and suck because yeah. they never forget. Lucian mm -hmm. Holt, when I auditioned for the comic strip, he said, be very certain you want to audition for me today because I will probably always think of you exactly what I think of you today. That and, is true. Yeah. That and I and I it's one of the things I faced when I came back. Yeah. Uh, about, oh, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I had an audition for people that I had been working for for 20 years as a headliner. You know, and uh because that you know, just been I don't know hard, but that that's got to have been a, a an interesting feeling, at least. I, I had know, a go ahead, Kathy. Because I, I, I was managing Julie at the time, and I I feel like, and I don't want to speak for you, Julie. I feel like it was an opportunity to go. I'll show you. Like uh, it was an opportunity to go. <laughs> you you didn't even see me at my best, kind of, and now uh -huh. I'm in my element. And I feel like a lot of times you just went in and blew the doors off the place. Well, that's what kept happening. They would put me yeah. up in the middle and that, you know, and, 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 and the headliners would just, you know, I, and I'm sorry, I didn't want to do that, but I was trying to, you know, prove myself. Well, okay. you had to do that. Yeah. You, you had to. And you were always hysterical. You never. Oh, uh, thank you. But you really were. You were, uh, you know, there's fun. There's, there, there is funny. And then there is funny and strong. And that's what I think you always were. And a lot of people are really funny, legitimately funny, really good. They have careers and everything, but it doesn't mean they're strong. Yeah. And you always had both. Thank you. I, I, cause I was very, always very insecure about my, my material and, and about my act. And I felt like a hack, you know, and I, was like, you know, it's just, I did, I, you know, and that's it's, what's funny is, you know, we, it, it's what other people think of us has nothing to do with what we think of ourselves. <laughs> no. I don't you feel, feel that way you, now. You I, see I, that one person in yeah. the audience not laughing. You're like, mm. right. Meanwhile, yeah. 449 other people are laughing yeah. their asses off. But, right. but now I, now, that's the difference between then and now. Now I, I'm confident in what I'm doing up there enough to, to think that if it, if you don't like me, well, that's okay. You don't have to like me. Right. But it's not going to devastate me as yeah. a comic, you know? I never cared for the one person who wasn't laughing. I did care for the entire fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> and we called that the Tropicana. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Tony, please. I hate him. He's a huge name shall not be brought up. Yeah. Well, listen, I got I want to. We're going to wrap this up. And uh, um, uh, and I know Jimmy, our producer, gets pissed off whenever I say that because uh, he goes, just keep talking. And, and and I'd love to do that, but but I want to, you know, we've we've held you up. What what are you doing now? Do you, do you want anything you want to plug while you're? No, because I'm I'm at. Uh, You've done everything. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm at. Uh, it's that fun transitional uh, uh, period. Michael and I are, are getting uh, uh, ready. It, it won't. We won't pitch this year. We'll be pitching in the. Then okay. we'll see. Maybe something will happen. And we've got another thing that we're working on because you got you never you don't ever stop working. You don't ever have only one thing. You need a, like a continuum. You got this on now. This one's almost ready, but we've got a couple of months before the you know reasons why we're pitching. So we're working on that. Uh, so we'll see that that in, in terms of uh, uh, professional stuff. Uh, that's really where my uh, focus is. I've also got a couple of murder mysteries that I'm uh, been uh, writing, so stuff like that. But but it's nothing that's out there at uh, at this point because uh, I took about I uh, I took a chunk of time off uh, of the business altogether for, for like 2013 until I uh, started working with Michael around uh, 2017 2018. Mm -hmm. So I did nothing. 
is is there a place that we can follow you to see your next well, project? Facebook, Facebook and yeah, yeah okay, great. I can give you her number if and, you want. Well, no, I meant if <laughs> for the, when the projects do come out, so yes. we can. Oh yeah, that's see. I do. Uh, I yeah. will, although I tell people uh, I'm the person will tell you uh, when when I've got an air date. Got it. You know, it's I, 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 I want talk about it until it's there. Yep, got it. I think I want to close with with this uh, this thought and i've said this a million times every major life lesson i've ever learned about how to live my life well has come because of comedy everything i know about living has come from comedy yes uh and and i think kathy and i have had this discussion you feel the same way and jenna you too it sounds like you know we're we're, we're so blessed to be able to do this yes in, in some form and I do think just a, a note for, for people, uh, you know, because I think a lot of people that listen to your show want uh, are, are in the business or or, uh, or want to be in the business. But the skills that you learn, even if it's not stand up or getting uh, laughs, the ability to speak. Um, I did raise between five and six million dollars for charity because uh, my job. T uh, Cat TLC was the first thing where I was really hands on. My job on all of those missions was to witness it, come back and speak about it in a way that would raise money. Um, and uh, that skill, they were not jokes, needless to say, but the, the skill of speaking mm -hmm. in that way translates beyond stand up, beyond <clears throat> acting to <throat> anything you want to do in your mm -hmm. life. Creating passion, interest, storytelling, right. all of it is that extension, and that's what creates right. the Be interest. compelling, and people will open up their wallets. It's just, yes. it's just that simple. Be compelling, and people will hire you. Be compelling, and people will buy your project. And stand-up comedy teaches you to be compelling. Mm -hmm. Forces yes, you. Does. Forces you. Well, yeah. I mean, yes, <laughs> well we, are, I'm, uh, we are compelled to end this little Thank get you together. so much for having me. Oh, Jeanette, I can't thank you enough. I um, I was been looking so forward to this. I, I'm and it's everything I thought it would be. You just been she wore her best sweater. Oh, it. stop with the sweater already! I'm just. <laughs> Jeanette, Jeanette, it's a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. My it's pleasure. Great. Really nice to meet you. you and by the way, your show is great. I, I told Julia, I just listened to the because I haven't been around, uh, but I can't. I just listened to the Rich Scheidner one. Oh my God! If anybody is seeing this one and hasn't listened to that one, you gotta go back. Thank you. We're we're, oh, we're real right. happy with it. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a great show. Uh, we'll do Pleasure. dinner when I come into the city. Make her so, pay. Assuming, assuming you're in the country. Yeah, I'll be in the country for a while. So All right. we're thank at, you for your work for too. That's and great. Great to meet you. Thank you, you too. so much. All right. Take I care. I love you. Bye, Bye. Jeanette. Take care. Bye. Wasn't that great, Kath? Oh. Oh, lots She's of fun. great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we hope you're enjoying this. Is going to be. We're going to wrap up right here and say goodbye to you all. Uh, thank you. Katie says goodbye. I hear Katie's her in the background. Goodbye. She was she's, good the whole night, but thank she you. She was, goodbye. and now she's yipping. Let's wave goodbye. Bye, Katie. Goodbye. And goodbye to Julia's sweater. Goodbye. Hopefully, it'll make another appearance. You know, I'm going to wear it every week now. Oh, goodbye. it'll be like Mrs. Uh, Rogers. Goodbye. Welcome to Goodbye. the neighborhood. All right. Get off. Mr. Let's McFeely off is on the phone. I'll give you like Mr. McFeely. I got Mr. Five Fingers here. All right. Well, that Stop would be it, Mr. Katie. McFeely. All right. Let's get, oh, oh. We're out of here. All right.